Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Pastor Patrick Walker. I want to look at a very theologically deep passage today from Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, starting in verse 11 through 14. Let me read that for you, and we'll dive in. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing and glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 14 says, Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So let me see if I can break down a little more insight into these three verses. I think there's a parallel structure here. And uh, the Apostle Paul, who's who's the author of Titus, is writing the same thing twice. So synonymous with the grace of God is Jesus Christ. So let's look at verse 11. It says, The grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. So we are born into sin. We are born slaves to sin and Satan. We are imprisoned in the kingdom of darkness. And apart from the supernatural power of God that goes into darkness to pull people out of darkness, to open their eyes, um, to, to, um, to, to soften their hearts, and give them understanding, no individual could be saved on their own. So it's it's purely and totally a supernatural work of God to which we must cooperate. But God even gives us the faith, the gift of faith, to believe upon him, to receive the free gift that he's offering. So grace goes into the kingdom of darkness. He's It's appeared, Jesus has appeared to all men to offer salvation to all people. But once we are saved... Jesus is now sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven. He said, once I go back to heaven, I'll send to you a helper. It's the Holy Spirit's job. He is the third person of the Trinity who is with us on the earth with believers. So once an individual is saved, that's not the end. The Holy Spirit now takes over to continue the work of grace in that believer's life. And what the Holy Spirit is attempting to accomplish is the same thing that he did in the life of Jesus. Jesus Uh, left his divine powers in heaven. He came to earth. He took a human body. And he was perfectly filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit in the body of Jesus, in the human body of Jesus, was the one who worked these works of godliness and holiness and obedience to the will of the Father. So the key to the Christian life is one of emptiness, is one of crucifixion, is one of surrender. If we will empty ourselves if we will crucify the flesh, if we will surrender this vessel to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would do the same works that he did in Jesus and through Jesus, he'll do in us. The Spirit of Christ will live in us and naturally produce the same works that he that we see in the life of Jesus will be produced in us. And that is the role of the grace of God. The grace of God to lead people to salvation. And once they are saved, to get them to renounce, to turn away from ungodliness, this is verse 12, and worldly passions, their old way of living, their old life, their fleshly life, right? In a spirit of surrender, um, so the Holy Spirit can fill them, that they might live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So he doesn't just save us to sit on the sidelines. Jesus desires to save us, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, that we might live for him in this life. Now, verse 13 is kind of the transition. It says, while we wait for the return of Jesus, who, verse 14, gave himself to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So this verse is synonymous. It's a parallel with verse 11 and 12. And essentially, the grace of God uh, is synonymous with Jesus Christ. The grace of God leads people to salvation. What has Jesus done? Jesus, uh, it says in verse 14, it says he has redeemed us from all wickedness. So to redeem means to purchase something. I think about purchasing something from slavery um, and to restore it back. Like, for example, uh, if we ran out of money and I took my wife's diamond wedding ring and I sold it to the pawn shop. 
I got a better job and a month later, I was able to save up enough money. I'd go back to the pawn shop to redeem, to purchase back that ring in order to give it back to my wife. So he goes into the kingdom of darkness. He redeems, he purchased those who are in slavery by his own blood. But once he brings them out, again, parallel with verse 12, once he brings them out, his desire is that they, that they would walk in purity. He purifies them from all wickedness and he works to produce in them an eagerness to do what is right, to have fruitful works, godly works that please him. So it's not just salvation, but it's also sanctification. Salvation is the first step through the narrow gate of trusting, believing in Jesus, giving our lives to him in submission and faith. But once we take that first step, the next 50 years, 10 years, whatever it may be, you know, that we are on this earth, that we walk out our Christian faith, the design for that, Jesus designed for us, is that we would say no to the old life, ungodliness, worldly passions, wickedness, and rather purify ourselves and offer ourselves to do what is good with self-control, upright, and godliness. So, we see a parallel here, here in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. Two parallel passages as he's really stressing the point that it is the work of Christ, it's the work of grace, it's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring a person to salvation, but not to stop there, to continue on a lifelong journey of transformation. And the key of which is as we surrender to him and as we abide in Jesus and we empty ourselves of ourself, of our ego, you know, the Holy Spirit is able to fill us with truth, with his love, with his desires, with his passions, and produce in and through us a life that is pleasing, a life that is similar to that of Jesus Christ. The same life that the Holy Spirit produced in Jesus, he wants to produce in us. We've got to give him permission. The secret of that is surrender. All right. I hope you are blessed by this passage. Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. Until next time.